Welcome to my talk about Pearl in the Blood. Uh, my name is Dennis Banach and I'll uh, try to uh, show you um, how you can do cloud computing in Pearl today. So, let's start. Today we're going to take a look on the uh, definition of cloud uh, for a developer, like how I define uh, cloud, and we'll, we'll take a look how it works. Uh, we also take a look on the motivation. Why do we really want to bother with it? So, what, uh, what, what do we gain out of it? Then I'm going to break the rule for uh, making a presentation. I'm going to do a live demo. So, if you do a presentation, you should never do a live demo. I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, hope for the internet connection. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And last but not least, uh, we are gonna we can talk about it. We, we should have enough time. So let's jump in. Okay, my name is Dennis Banovic. I work in Salzburg in Austria uh, for a, a small internet agency with about 35 people, and we are hiring researcher for developers, so if you would like to come to join our team, more than welcome, just let me know. Cloud, cloud computing, what is it? Uh, we, we've been hearing this word cloud for, I don't know, six, eight, ten years now, and um, um, right now there, there's a kind of a definition that came out, and um, we can split it into uh, three different um, cloud computing sessions. IIS is an infrastructure, is a service, which is basically something like uh, Amazon that's with the Elastic Cloud. Platform as a service, this is uh, what I would define as a cloud for a developer, because um, you, you don't have to bother with uh, Operations, because you you don't have to uh, put on the operating system on the machine and uh, make sure that the network is working and the database is working and so on. That's why you go for a platform as a service, and this is what we are going to take a look today. And software as a service um, is. Uh, uh, basically, when you just go and use webmail for example, and or other solutions, right? So, where so here are the differences. So basically, in before uh, Amazon came out, you you had either your virtual machines or you had a uh, metal machines. So you had to take care of everything: networking, servers. Uh, operating system, your runtime, you, had, you basically got a root access to the machine and have fun. Uh, then Amazon came out with the uh, infrastructure as a service and uh, gave you uh, a little bit more flexibility and uh, it gained a lot of momentum. So there are a lot of competitors right now out there. So the service provider takes care of the Visualization, servers, storage, and everything else. And you are responsible for the OS, for patching, for runtime, for your data, and so on. And for, of course, for your applications. Uh, for me, it's interesting to, to see something like that, but it was totally a uh, closed in system. So you couldn't uh, really develop on, on your machine, you couldn't run it in your. Uh, Server in your uh, infrastructure, you could basically only run it in, in Google's infrastructure, and there you also had a lot of um, limitations what you could do and how you could do it. So, that's all. And uh, software as a service, we all know, a service provider take care, takes care of everything, so when you use Gmail, you're basically using something. So, okay, let's say we want to put Perl in the cloud. 
you want to develop applications that are made with uh, Perl and you want to run them in, in the platform as a service thing. So what do you need for it? Of course you need Perl. And uh, usually you're going to go and use uh, one of the PSGI frameworks like Mojolicious, Catalyst, or Dancer, or any other similar. Uh, nowadays, um, it's not even, uh, uh, you don't have to do it, but I would still recommend to do it. Uh, it gives you more flexibility. And of course, what you, what you also need is uh, a provider. Um, Dot Cloud was, uh, I think, the first one who started uh, with uh, Perl support. So you could run your Perl applications in their cloud. Um, Staccato um, came out out of the um, Cloud Foundry. It's made by, uh, it's made by uh, Active State. And it's an uh, add-on on Cloud Foundry. Heroku also has some uh, third-party extensions to run a, a Perl uh, applications, and uh, the last one that came out, but uh, for me is uh, I think the one that's gonna gain a lot of momentum in the next time is the OpenShift made by Red Hat. So today the the demo is gonna be for OpenShift. So. Status. The technology is still on the bleeding edge, so we are still uh, in the in the development phase. And uh, but uh, you can see that it's, it's getting uh, the, the curve is getting uh, not so high anymore. So I think that there's going to be some consolidation uh, in the next two years. Uh, you can uh, notice that because Dotcloud is trying to push their service to be kind of open source, so they released Decker or Docker. Has anyone heard about it? Mm -hmm. uh, Did you say Docker? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the Staccato uh, is a very interesting product. It's uh, more uh, business oriented than uh, OpenShift is right now. OpenShift is really an uh, open source solution. Staccato is uh, made by Active State. They want to, uh, they really spent the last two years developing this uh, Staccato thing. And it's for me, it's the best um, version of uh, Cloud Foundry. If you want to use Cloud Foundry and you don't care about the uh, paying for it, which is Okay, we all earn money somehow. Uh, Staccato is the thing I would suggest to go if you want to run uh, right now for your business in production. Heroku uh, is a service uh, for the US. Um, that most of these uh, providers have uh, data centers only in, in the US. So if you go and run your apps, you're going to just stick to the US uh, data center. So, yeah. Uh, I really tried hard to get uh, Staccato to make uh, some instances available in Europe, but uh, not yet. Yeah, but you always get an answer yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. And it's, this has been for a year or so. And the last one, OpenShift. Um, Red Hat, I think, realized two years ago that uh, they need something like a platform as a service too. So they went uh, and uh, built one. And uh, the, the, the thing about OpenShift, it's open source. So you can go on, on their website, download the machine, like a download image, and run it on, the, on your own computer. You can use the same machine uh, and run it in your uh, server, in your uh, server housing or in your data center. And basically, you can be your own OpenShift provider if you want. Um, is it ready for production? 
OpenShift, uh, kind of. I wouldn't go into a high level website right now on it. But if you want to do a, some, something smaller, like a blog or a website or something that fits in, into it, uh, you can go anytime and uh, register for OpenShift. Uh, you get three uh, gears for free, so they won't charge you for that. If you need more, they will charge you, but um, with three gears, you can actually do a lot. So, we're going to take a look on uh, OpenShift. So, what's in there? Uh, when Platform as a Service started, they, um, they would usually go and uh, say, okay, we are Platform as a Service for Java, and we are Platform as a Service for Ruby, and uh, And um, that cloud was uh, the first one to go and say, okay, we support a lot of languages. And uh, Staccato, um, Staccato is also one of them and OpenShift uh, support also a lot of stuff so uh, you are not stick to one language you can use uh, Python, Java, Node.js, Ruby well, um, the platform as a service also provides you with, um, other stuff like database, data storage um, cron jobs and so on because uh, on the platform you have to use the services you can't just go and create a branch of it. it's not a it, it is a Linux machine but it's not a Linux machine that you have uh, access to as you are used to so you have to use the server to run so, running OpenShift uh, as I said, you can run it in a private or public cloud wherever you want on a, um, Amazon uh, Red Hat has a hosting in Europe for uh, OpenShift so you can go and try it uh, how it works in Europe it's, uh, it's on, on Amazon and it's in the UK so it's kind of oh, island, it's, it's kind of Europe and as I said before you can run it on, uh, on your own machine uh, I have it here running on my notebook. So, manage it. When you want to uh, test it, run it, and so on, you have to manage the system. And you know, uh, basically, you can manage the stuff that they allow you to manage, of course. So, you can do it where they have a web interface uh, that is also available. When you download the image, you also have the web interface running on your machine. Uh, there's a command line tool, uh, Red Hat Cloud, uh, IHC. You get uh, kind of a SSH access to uh, to the gear. Gear is a kind of a encapsulated uh, thing that runs your code. Uh, the gears are isolated from each other with uh, the uh, SA gears. So it's, uh, they say it's very safe. I'm not an expert on SA Linux, so I can't. And uh, you get an ID integration in Eclipse. So if you like Eclipse, uh, go on and use it. So, okay, now you will say, okay, I want to test it, uh, what can I do? Deploying your app is uh, really easy. It's a, uh, let's, let's just take a short look. So, you go, you, you go to a command line or you go to a web interface and say, create a new app. And you decide, okay, I want this app to be a Perl app. And uh, so you do uh, go to the uh, create the app. And just say git clone, and you have your app on your machine. You develop it. You push your stuff in, whatever you 
need to do. Commit an app, and uh, you just push it back. That's it. So there's no special uh, thing to use or whatever. So with, if you're used to Git, it's all you need. So if you don't use Git, you can copy the command. So why? Why would you want to uh, run your apps in the cloud? First of all, it's a uh, one big thing is the availability. So when you go and say, I like 10 years or 15 years ago, if you would write an app for uh, someone, then the, when you when you done with it, you say, okay, we need a server. And someone would go and say, okay, we need to buy one. Then uh, goes up to the sales and comes back and in about six weeks you had your server. So you took it in, put it into the in your server case and then you could run app. Of course, this was only needed when this was a little bit bigger or I don't know. But uh, there were some issues. Uh, so um, then uh, the, the whole virtualization thing came out, and then you didn't need to buy a new server every time for a new app. Because you could say, okay, create a new server, there's an image. Well, wow. so you didn't need a few weeks, you just need a few hours to get your sysadmin to create your new server and so on. Um, here you don't even need a sysadmin. Because you as a developer can go and say create a new uh, app and run it. In, in. If the infrastructure is there, you don't need to do anything. Just, just go create your app and it runs. And if you want, it scales. And it scales horizontally by default. So that means that uh, if you hit a lot of traffic on your app, um, you can configure it so it's not running on one gear or two gears, so it's running up to 16 gears with, uh, without you doing anything. You just configure it, I want to do at least two gears and up to 16 and uh, it runs. And when it's not needed, it's going to go down, and when it needs uh, more, it's going to go up. Uh, it works with a high availability proxy that uh, stands in front of the gears, and this one just scales. And uh, as I said before, you do less ops and more depth. Because you don't care uh, about the versions that are there because you have the, and you said have the same versions on your machine in your uh, data center or at the Red Hat outside. Um, when you write cloud applications, then you have to change uh, how you think a little. So first of all, when uh, when Amazon brought up the infrastructure as a service, everyone thought, "Hey, great!" And then they found out, well, <laughs> from time to time we're losing machines; uh, they just hang out. We have no idea why this happened, uh, and trying to fix it is not worth it because you you don't know what happened. So. They started to uh, developing applications that will just tolerate this. So, um, if one machine goes down, you don't care because there are five others that are handling this traffic. So, I would strongly recommend when you write your apps to think uh, for toler, which means um, you have to take care that if uh, the, the one application that is running there is using the services that are provided and not just uh, when, for example, a user uploads a picture or whatever 
that you just store it somewhere in the in the local file uh, system. You can't do that because uh, when there are three or many other videos. So if you if user uploads one picture, then it's on one of them. It's not on all, but it's just on one of them. And uh, on the next year, on the next request, the picture is not there. So you have to think about these issues, especially when you uh, go and say, okay, I want to install some uh, software that is already out there. For example, if you want to install a WordPress or something. So you have to make sure that the word, the, when someone uploads something, that uh, this gets stored correctly. And uh, this is also the same thing, think stateless. So if you're storing a lot of information in your sessions, uh, on your session files or whatever, uh, this is not going to work. So if you have a, you, you have to make sure that you store your sessions in the database or somewhere else so you can access them from any of the gears. Basically, you don't want to care on which gear your application is running. You don't want to care which data center is running. If it's here in the uh, Ukraine or in the UK or in Germany or in the US. And, as I said, think services, not service. Because I'm... Um, you need to use the service like cron job or file storage and so on or database. You can't just go and do your thing that you use. And uh, uh, one other thing is uh, the whole conflict is in the environment variable. Um, so um, basically, if you have a nice grid uh, there, the, the Access to the MySQL is going to be in the environment. Okay, now we have about 18 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to try to do a live demo right now. Uh, it depends if I have an internet connection. So please. Um, sorry, before I start, are there any questions to uh, what I've said? <coughs> yeah. About uh, the open stack, do you have the ripple there so that you can say that it's safe there, so it's not like terrible that it could go away and you could lose everything that could be committed to that open um, stack? I wouldn't see it as a safe or backup or whatever. Well, the thing, uh, as I said, it's it's just a thing that it's there, and if it's gone, then it's gone. Yeah, so you kind of need to have your own git repo for actual yeah. saving this stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend saving anything in the cloud and think it's gonna be safe. Yeah. Uh, any other questions before we start? Yeah. This concerning uh, the deployment. Yeah. So is it necessary to keep uh, each repository on your uh, open sheet, actually, or you can tell open sheet to download your app from, say, GitHub. Okay, so the question was, uh, is it necessary to um, keep your repository on uh, open shift, or can you have it somewhere else, like uh, GitHub? Uh, so, yes, it's possible. So you can, say, download my, the app from there. They have their own. Just one repository of many that you can have in Git. So how you handle it is up to you. Another question was yeah. curious. Uh, in any, any uh, use cases of uh, usage of like, cloud and production of uh, projects or companies within uh, production? Uh, I didn't do any research on who is running it right now. I know that the uh, HP uh, Cloud is running uh, a lot of stuff on it. Uh, we can talk about that later. I, I, I didn't especially do a lot of research on that. 
But basically, you can run on OpenShift, you can run uh, any software, whether it's in Perl or in any other language. Of course, we we'll take care of the file uploads and so on. So, any other questions before we start? So, what I want to show you now is uh, I'm going to create a new Perl uh, application in uh, OpenShift. I'm going to download it to my machine, I'm going to change it, push, uh, uh, put my Dancer uh, application on it. We're going to create a MySQL database, uh, add, add it to the, to the cartridge. Push it on up and uh, hope it works. So, let's start. So, I have prepared my commands that I need to do. Just avoid any typos or something. So. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to create an application named Yapsi. Yeah. So our internet connection is here, we should be fine. So what happens now, uh, the command I'm told will uh, create this app in the, uh, on the Red Hat uh, OpenShift. We'll uh, initiate everything. It's a Perl, uh, Perl 5.10. The thing about OpenShift is you can create your own cartridges. So that's also a cool thing. So if you don't want to go with Perl 5.10, you can go with basically any Perl. You can go with 5.8 or 5.16. It's up to you. you can, it's re really a flexible thing, open source. So you can go and create your own cartridges. So, uh, Basically, it's done. We, we have our application here. Uh, we can take a look on it if it works. So I'm just going to copy it here. And yeah, that's it. Uh, we have our own uh, first application running. So, um, Let's take a look at it. So basically it's nothing more than just a print. I know. But we want to do more. So let's do it. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to download the a Dancer example from uh, GitHub and push it into uh, my application here. So, I'm just going to copy a few GitHub uh, git commands in there. That's it. Uh, I'm running as a root, so I'm going to change. Permissions there, and uh, I'm just gonna copy some templates and my application into the system. Alrighty. and that's it. The next thing we need to do, the next thing we need to do is um, uh, most of the uh, platform as a service provider. Uh, have one file where you put your modules in because when you 
push your application into the cloud. Uh, you're not going to write everything by yourself. You want to use CPAN and other stuff. So there's a, there's a file in the system that is called devlist. Change that file. I'm just going to change the is I've just changed the, uh, the dancer config file uh, to switch over to a template toolkit and uh, I've changed the, the directory where it can find the layout. That's it. So I'm gonna uh, add everything and say uh, hit commit. So, this can take some time now, because what, what happens right now is uh, uh, OpenShift is going to go to CPAP and download and build all the modules that I've put in and all the dependencies and so on. Uh, so, first, first time when you do that, it can take a few minutes, because the cartridge is usually blank. Nothing there, it's just the core modules. And uh, you need some stuff for Dancer, you need some stuff for DVI, and uh, mm -hmm. I also have uh, uh, another module in there, so this is going to take uh, a few minutes. Uh, while we are waiting on it, I can show you uh, the application that I've pushed already in there basically the same. So. so this is the application that I've pushed today during the uh, opening talk in the main hall. So what is it? Basically it's a, just a demo dancer application. I will show you the code in, in, in a minute. And uh, yeah, it's running on a on OpenShift. There's a dump of the environment can, can you read it a little bit? So you have a really uh, the special OpenShift environment in there. Um, I can change this to So for example, here's the MySQL uh, username, password, and so on. The whole URL to connect to it. So. And uh, we can go and generate some time numbers. Um, I've, I've done this uh, for a demo just to show you um, that you can download basically any uh, XS module on it too and it will compile and run it without any problem. This is basically something that blames. So, usually, it's 
very helpful. Uh, someone wants to test the prime number? Just give me one. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, I'm not sure. <coughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Two seven zero one. Okay, two seven zero one. Sorry. Six six six. No. <laughs> 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 Which one is that? Okay. Uh, that's better. So, the dB time. Um, this is just the time out of the uh, MySQL that is running for it. Uh, I didn't do any. Uh, a lot of SQL. I just wanted to show you that uh, uh, the connection to the database works. Uh, okay, let's go into the background and see how far are we. So test base template toolkit. Yeah, looks good. So usually after template toolkit is done, it's uh, not more than two minutes. Uh, question. Yeah, sure. This happens uh, when you did the push, right? When I did the push, yes. Yes, so uh, there's some sort of hook behind Yeah. Or uh, some, uh, they do something when you push. Yeah. Uh, what is happening? It's happening uh, on the remote? On the remote machine. machine. This is not on our machine, this is on the remote machine. Uh, so the, the modules are installed Hey, we're done. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and the, the thing is, it happens only once. So if you go and say, uh, I've changed a few lines, and you push it again, uh, it happens, the whole process doesn't happen again, uh, but it's only, um, only the changes, like if you added a new model, module, this is going to get filed, but otherwise uh, it's going to be reused. The modules are added to the cartridge. Uh, yeah. yeah. The cartridge is only remote. Uh, yeah. You don't have a local copy of the cartridge. No, 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 no. You don't need that. You just have the okay. Sorry. Uh, you can. Uh, you just go in the command line and say, okay, uh, recreate. Uh, I want. I don't want. I want for my application to have five cartridges. And so the thing will go and copy it internally to five different cartridges. Yeah. What is the procedure of test independence? Say uh, you change something, but you didn't add a new module to your dependency list, and then your application after you upgrade actually fails. Is there any kind of procedure to test that? Uh, I they, they have some uh, system where they detect. Uh, like you can see it here. Skipping module OpenShift install from CPAN found locally. Uh, so add to OpenShift, uh, oh, please add to the dev list installed from CPAN. Uh, first when I wrote uh, use DBI and I pushed it and I didn't change the, the, the dev list, it detected it. And but say, but say, wait a second, say you didn't change the dev list, you just forgot Yeah, I didn't, I forgot. And so it noticed, it. it noticed and installed it anyway. Mm -hmm. so so when you it's, it's kind of a good thing. So, we are almost out of time. I'm just going to go and show you that the thing works. So, if I reload and uh, we see what we need to see. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> if, uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please. Uh, come up to the top. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer it. I'm playing with it for more than two years. So, you're welcome.